How many of us would attend a church led by a pastor who had a criminal record? If you walked in a church and you knew that the leader there once committed evil crimes, would you have it in your heart to forgive or even accept that God could use such a person? I wonder, would we consider that pastor to be beyond God's hand of restoration and transformation? Well, I want to tell you about three men in the Bible. These three men are some of the most mightily used men in the Bible. They are men who had close relationships with God, they had a real knowledge of God, and they saw great miracles and signs and wonders. But these three men have stood before many of us in this present day. We would consider these men outlaws, convicts, and criminals. And after finding out the things that these men did in their past, we would most likely call for them to be sent to a maximum security prison. But that's not what God did with them. He chose to transform their hearts and use them for His glory. And who are these three men? They are the Apostle Paul, David, and Moses. Let's begin with Paul. Before he was Paul the Apostle, he was known as Saul from Tarsus. He was originally a Pharisee and a persecutor of early Christians. Saul was a jealous Pharisee who was determined to stamp out what he saw as a dangerous hearsay that was spreading in the Jewish community. This Saul would go door to door and beat Christians. It's believed that he also killed them. And in the book of Acts, the first person to die for following Jesus was a man named Stephen. Stephen gave a speech about Jesus and called everyone to repent and trust in Jesus. And at the end of that speech, Stephen was stoned to death. It says Saul in Acts 8 verse 1, and Saul approved of his execution. At the least, Saul approved and was happy with that execution. At the most, he set up the execution. Saul killed followers of Jesus. But despite all of this, Saul had a dramatic conversion experience on the road to Damascus, where he saw a vision of Jesus after this experience. The once persecutor of Christians became a Christian himself. Now let me ask you, was Paul so bad that God couldn't use him? Of course not. Paul was transformed when he encountered Christ. Moving on, let's talk about David. David, he's known as being a man after God's own heart. And that's a very high compliment to be known for seeking God. But while David is known for his love of the Lord, God, he was at one point an adulterous murderer. As king, it was David's duty to go and lead his men while they were at war. This is what all the leaders of the foreign armies were doing at the time. However, while Israel was at war, David stayed home. And one day while he was home, he saw a married woman named Bathsheba bathing. She was married to a man named Uriah, who was part of David's army. and Therefore, he was out at war. And David was tempted and filled with lust and decided to sleep with Bathsheba. And she became pregnant. And instead of David admitting his sin, he makes things even worse by trying to cover it up by bringing Uriah home from war to sleep with Bathsheba. However, because Uriah is an honorable man, he didn't want to sleep with his wife while the rest of Israel was at war. So since David couldn't get Uriah to sleep with Bathsheba, he does the unthinkable and signs Uriah's death notice. He gives Uriah a note that he was not supposed to read. Uriah hand delivers the note to his commanding officer, and this note sends Uriah to the front line and leads to his death. Do you see how this was just one thing after another for David? But here's the thing. David did repent and God forgave him. In the same way, you and I, regardless of our past and of our mistakes, if we truly repent, God can and will forgive us. And finally, let's speak of Moses. God stepped into Moses' life in a very mighty way. 
While all other male babies his age were being killed by the Pharaoh, God spared his life. Moses was put into a river on a baby-sized boat and pulled out of the river by the Pharaoh's daughter. Now you would think someone saved in such a miraculous way would live a life entirely to God. However, Moses committed the most heinous sin that a human can commit. He was a murderer. While he didn't grow up in slavery due to living with the Pharaoh's daughter, the rest of the Israelites did. As an adult, Moses watched an Egyptian beat an Israelite. It infuriated him. He went up to the Egyptian and beat him to death. Instead of admitting his sin, he hid the body and fled. Not only was Moses a murderer, but he wasn't the bravest of men. When God called Moses to go and speak to Pharaoh about the release of the people of Israel from slavery, Moses hesitated. He made excuses. He pointed out his weaknesses to God. But despite all of this, despite his past, God still used Moses to perform mighty miracles and lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. According to our standards as humans, we would have discarded these individuals. We would have said they had gone too far for committing such evil sin. But thank God, He is not like man. He does not operate like us or according to our standards. When you come to Jesus and repent of your sins, He will take you and cleanse you. And should your heart be willing, He can even use you. When He tries to come in the cover of darkness, when He tries to deceive in the light of day, when He tries to make me question God's promises and lose my way, I will remember this. If God is for me, who can be against me? If God Almighty is on my side, what can come against me? There's no need to be afraid of the devil. There is no reason to be frightened. Jesus Christ rose again to have power over everything. That means He has power over any storm you face. He has the power to help your financial need. He has the power to heal you emotionally and physically. He has the power to protect you. If the devil tries to attack you in the darkness of night, God will save you. If he tries to attack you in the light of day, God will save you. With God on your side, there is no giant too big, no stronghold too tough, no chain that's unbreakable for him. So when you come to understand that adversity will come, the devil will attack. But God always wins, and oh, what a mighty God we serve.